Hi everybody, welcome to Mark's Backyard Birds. Today we're kind of redoing an old video uh, for a very, very common <laughs> identification conundrum, as we call it. Uh, there's several of these in the bird watching world. Uh, this one, of course, is hairy versus downy woodpecker. There's purple finch versus house finch. There's uh, raw, uh, northern mockingbird versus uh, loggerhead shrike. There's a f there's some really confusing identifications out there, especially for beginning bird watchers. And I did this one a while back, but uh, it, the sound quality is bad, so I'm redoing it today. Uh, and today I'm gonna we're gonna go through we're gonna do the my three identification uh, separation tips, and we're gonna also show you some uh, kind of variation from uh, parts of the country and also between young and adult. So, so here we go. First of all, great picture taken by a good friend of mine, Mary Nemesek, who uh, caught the, the birds on the same bird feeder, same distance, camera and angle, not blown up, anything. Uh, so just super comparison of the two. Uh, first off, I will I'll, I'll show you uh, the sexual dimorphism difference. We talk about that in videos where they have, uh, you can tell a, a bird's sex by its appearance. And on downy woodpeckers, it's very subtle, but it is there. On the left, the little downy woodpecker has a red spot on the back of his head. That makes him a male. Male. And on the right, the hairy woodpecker does not have that red, so she's a female. That applies to both species. That's how you tell uh, sex in the two birds. But in the bird watching world, there are several conundrums and identification that I have used a rule for a long time. Uh, and that is uh, whenever, in, in this one, if you think the bird that landed on your feeder is a hairy, then it's a downy. If you see a bird on the power line you think is a loggerhead shrike, then it's probably a mockingbird. If you think uh, that reddish finch on your feeder is a purple finch, then it's a house finch. Why do I feel that way? Why do what, what make drives that? And that is because when you do see that other bird, when you see that hairy woodpecker land on that bird feeder that you are so used to seeing the little downy on, because the downy is the most common woodpecker in North America, especially well, except for maybe the Southwest where they don't occur and, and Harry's don't occur much down there either, except down uh, one strand that runs through down into Mexico and further South. But we see Downey so much that when we do finally see a Harry woodpecker join on, uh, on, fly up onto the feeder, then the bird's overall size is a huge indication that, that you do have a hairy woodpecker and not a downy. The, the overall comparison length of the little downy on that feeder, feeder and versus the hairy on the on the same feeder is immeasurable. They're they're cute. They're they're much much bigger words. Now, when they're hairy woodpeckers are not the size of a pileated or a flicker, but they're pretty close to the size of a red belly. Uh, and they're definitely the size of a yellow-bellied sapsucker. So, but when you only get to see one, size can be very, very misleading, especially through binoculars, especially at distance up in a tree. So we need better field marks. So one of the tricks that I have been using and teaching for years is the bill length trick. Look at how short the and stubby that bill is on that little downy woodpecker on the left. And look how long that relatively the bill length is on the hairy. And what I've always used as a is a method of measuring it, and that is when you when you see the bird, if you're looking through binoculars or you're they're looking out your window and you see it, if you can take that bill, the length of the bill, and push it back into the head, it'll only go about halfway through the skull. It'll just go on past the eye, underneath the eye pad. If you could do that with the hairy woodpecker. Its bill would go pretty much the whole length of its head. So it's the length of its bill is almost close to the length of the whole thickness of the head. So they have comparatively they have really big, uh, big bills. So overall size, the bill length trick, and then the last that I use is the white outer tail feathers versus not totally white. It's harder to see in this. So we're going to bring up other pictures. So. Let's bring up the, here it goes, the downy woodpecker. And very good shot to, so you can see underneath the tail feathers. And you see those black stripes across uh, on, the, on the underside of the tail. Well, those stripes show up on the outside of the tail as dots. 
And Ruth wrote an article for us for the, our, our store newsletter years ago that said it called Downies Have Dots. The, the, the black and the outer tail feathers of the downy woodpecker versus on the hairy woodpecker, it's why its outer tail feathers are totally white. They don't have those black stripes or black dots on them. So if you're just getting to see the, the bird from underneath, you're getting to see the bird's lower half, and you can see those outer tail feathers. Remember, we talk about those uh, outer tail feathers or the tail feathers on a woodpecker being very stiff and strong, and they use them as kickstands. So look at those white, those ta outer tail feathers. Are they white or, or are they not? So uh, the three tricks are the overall size, the bill length trick and the out white outer tail feathers. So uh, the, it, it, you can tell them apart. I know a lot of people that it's very confused, especially when you're a young bird watcher just learning and getting this trick. But one of some things that stand out about the bird, and we know that people watch these programs from all over the, the country. Um, you guys out west, your downy woodpeckers are quite often a almost a dirty looking to them. They're not at that crisp white that we see in in the eastern part of the range. Uh, it, and I guess it's a better camouflage color for the for the the deeper thicker forest of the northwest. Um, but just know this is a downy woodpecker, a male downy woodpecker from the Pacific Northwest area or the wet the, the Pacific area out west. And then this this picture was a hairy woodpecker taken. Um, in New Mexico years ago on a bird watching trip that I led. And you could, uh, the hairy woodpeckers tend to be darker out there. And there, there's not as many white spots in the back and in the uh, flanks and things on the feathers. And so you get an overall darker look out there, which is, a, a, is uh, common for the, uh, the Western regions, basically up in the mountains. And this guy shows a hairy woodpecker feeding its young. Now we talked about the red on the back for the male and not red on the, or no red on the back for a female. Well, in the young birds, especially these hairy woodpeckers, they have a red patch on the top of their head at, when they're after they fledge and until they molt completely into their adult plumage, they'll have reminiscence of that red and people will call and say, hey, that, I had a woodpecker that had red on top of his head partially, it looked like a hairy urban downy. Um, that's why it is. It's young, you know, and, and a lot of birds and their young plumages are a little bit misleading. So, you know, downy versus hairy. One of the uh, first conundrum, conundrums, identification problems you're going to have when you start bird watching. And it's so common. I mean, the, their downies are more common than harries in most of their range. I know you guys up north tend to have a lot more uh, harries than I think we do here. Um, but uh, being able to separate them out is a basic bird watching skill. So, Thanks so much for a lot watching. Thanks I did for that program. I, you know, I people, I, I've got to redo a lot. I got to redo like uh, the, the the purple finch versus house finch too, and it and and because that's another one that's really confusing. So, thanks for the idea. Give us a like. Give us a share. If you're on YouTube, and you have subscribed. Please do. Until next time, let's talk birds.